Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy, and it's time again for the Aquatacy Countdown. Eight aquarium fish you didn't know grew so big. These are eight freshwater fish species that although are sold at a small size, can grow to be whopping huge tank busters. For the purposes of this list, I've eliminated some obviously big species such as arowanas or red-tailed catfish. I'm focusing instead on fish that you may not realize grow as large as they do. And when we're done counting them down, please take a moment to subscribe to the Aquatacy channel and click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. Here we go. Number eight, Siamese algae eaters. One of the most useful fish species in the freshwater aquarium hobby is the Siamese algae eater. As its name implies, the Siamese algae eater is a pro at eating algae, in particular that unsightly and pesky blackbeard algae. This torpedo-shaped cyprinid is native to Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, and most predominantly, Thailand, formerly known as Siam, which is why the fish is known as a Siamese algae eater. Get it? This species is popular among fish keepers not only for its role as part of the cleanup crew, but because it is attractive, relatively peaceful, and very easy to care for. It does well at temperatures as low as 68 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as 79 degrees Fahrenheit with a pH range of 6.0 to 7.5 and a water hardness range between 1 and 15. This allows the Siamese algae eater to be kept in a variety of community aquarium settings with many different fish species. Its major selling point, however, is its ability to polish off a fair amount of algae in your tank, and that's why pet shops and local fish stores recommend them. But what some fish retailers neglect to mention is that Siamese algae eaters get rather large, reaching a length of up to 8 inches. Since they are usually sold at around an inch and a half or two inches, this can be a bit of a surprise later on for purchasers. Fortunately, this fish has quite an impressive lifespan, sometimes living as long as 10 years in captivity. So it will take a while for your Siamese algae eater to attain its maximum size. That will give you plenty of time to upgrade to a larger aquarium. If you decide to keep Siamese algae eaters, be mindful of the fact that if there isn't much algae left in your aquarium, you will need to supplement with dry foods that have a high content of vegetable matter, or even some cooked spinach or shelled cooked peas. A terrific fish that with a little bit of extra care will grow to be big, full-bodied, and happy for many years to come. Number 7. Kissing Garamis Though their moniker sounds romantic, nothing could be further from the truth as to why the Kissing Garami got its name. The supposed kissing behavior isn't about showing affection, it's more about showing aggression. Kissing garamis have forward-facing mouths, rather than the upward-facing mouths found on other garami species. When two kissing garamis meet, they may mouth bump each other, pressing their lips together aggressively for a moment as they size each other up. Not exactly the sharks and jets in West Side Story, but you get the idea. Their kissing behavior, which is really a form of sparring, was once thought to be practiced only by males. However, since it can be difficult to tell the two genders apart from their outward appearance, it is now accepted that both males and females take part in these bouts. Fortunately, this aggression seldom results in any physical damage. Like the previously mentioned Siamese algae eater, the kissing garami originates from Thailand, and Indonesia, and Cambodia, and Myanmar, and Malaysia, and Vietnam, and Laos, and is also fond of consuming algae. Its forward-facing mouth is perfect for picking algae off of surfaces. And also, like Siamese algae eaters, kissing garamis get much bigger than most people expect them to, reaching an average adult length of 10 inches. If you want to keep a single kissing garami, a tank no smaller than 75 gallons is recommended. Perhaps an even larger aquarium if you want to keep two and see their famous behavior, and to provide each with enough space to retreat from one another. Keeping this species is a commitment, as the kissing garami's mouth cannot bite and crunch large food, and will need tiny sized pellets or crumbled flakes with a high plant content to supplement their algae grazing, along with the occasional feeding of bloodworms or tubifex worms to keep them healthy. Also, a big part of that commitment is understanding that this fish can live up to 20 years or more. But if you have the time and the space, the kissing garami can be a fun addition to your aquarium. Number six, clown loaches. It really is like the circus came to town when you add clown loaches to your tank. These comical creatures with their fanciful coloration and amusing antics will definitely liven up any aquarium they are in. The clown loach gets its name both from its appearance and its behavior. Just as a circus clown draws immediate attention, the clown loach can instantly do the same with their eye-catching bright orange bodies, 
wide black stripes, and intensely red fins. And like their big top namesakes, Clown Loaches put on quite a show. Always active, always playful, and always entertaining. Clown Loaches are endemic to Indonesia, found only in Sumatra and Borneo, living predominantly in river channels where there is good water flow and the lighting may be subdued from the shade of overhanging trees. If you want to keep this fish hardy and healthy, then your home aquarium should mimic that environment, with areas of shade and well-filtered clean water. Also, in order to keep this species happy, you really need to maintain a group of five or more clown loaches, since they are quite gregarious and crave the companionship of their own kind. And that can be quite a problem if you don't have the proper tank space, since the clown loach can attain an adult size of 12 inches or more. Multiply that by five fish, and you can start to run out of room in what you thought was a decent-sized aquarium. Fortunately, once the clown loach reaches six inches in length, their growth rate seems to slow down significantly, so it will take a while for these clowns to get elephant-sized. But don't let their eventual size prevent you from considering them as pets. As long as you have the space and maintain clean water conditions, clown loaches are immensely rewarding. Although their size and their high activity level can intimidate some smaller species, clown loaches are quite peaceful, easy to feed, long-lived, and thoroughly entertaining. And if you have a snail problem in your tank, these are the guys you need, as clown loaches love to eat snails. So set up the big top, I mean big tank, grab some popcorn, sit back and enjoy the show that the clown loach will gladly put on for you. Number five, fancy goldfish. Who doesn't love goldfish, especially fancy goldfish? The goldfish has been the most popular aquatic pet for centuries. We love them for their charm, their personality, and their peaceful nature. A big part of their appeal is that over the years, breeders have been able to develop an incredible variety of goldfish body types and colorations. Comets, fantails, shabunkans, pearl scales, red caps, lion heads, telescopes, bubble eyes, and the list goes on. Something for everybody. Another reason for the popularity of the goldfish is its long lifespan. On average, goldfish live anywhere from 5 to 10 years or more. The oldest on record lived to be 43 years old. What many owners don't realize is that goldfish won't necessarily stop growing at a particular age. They can continue to grow their entire lives. That cute little fancy goldfish you bought when it was an inch and a half long could one day balloon to be 14 inches in length. By the way, it is an utter absolute myth that goldfish only grow as big as the tank you keep them in. Housing them in a small tank won't force them to stay small. They will eventually outgrow their diminutive enclosure and could develop health problems if not ultimately moved into larger dwellings. The absolute worst home for a goldfish is that stereotypical goldfish bowl. Goldfish need proper sized aquariums, not only because they get big, but because they produce a big amount of waste. Small bowls and nano tanks run the risk of the water becoming fouled too quickly. A good rule to go by is a 20 gallon aquarium for a single goldfish, then add 10 gallons for each additional goldfish. Sounds crazy, I know, yet it's true. Besides, the more space you give your fancy goldfish, the more room they have to grow and the healthier and happier they will be, giving you a chance to enjoy them for many years to come. Number four, Oscar cichlids. There is no freshwater fish species in the aquarium hobby more deserving of the title of wet pet than the Oscar. This popular South American cichlid is loved the world over for its sharp intelligence and its almost puppy dog-like enthusiasm. The Oscar is one smart fish that can quickly learn to recognize its owner, coming right up to the glass to greet them. Some even learn to be hand-fed. Their puppy-type behavior extends to other areas as well. Oscars can play hard, tear things up, and get into fights. Oscar cichlids are extremely territorial and will vehemently guard what they deem to be their territory. They are not afraid to take on other fish, even those bigger than themselves. And they have an excellent sense of time, always knowing when they're supposed to be fed and seldom willing to share their food. This can make it a little difficult to find suitable tank mates for them. In that sense, raising an Oscar cichlid is very much like raising a rambunctious puppy. Eventually, you find what works. There is one more similarity between puppies and Oscars. Puppies grow up to be full-sized dogs, and Oscars grow up to be full-sized fish. It might be a cute little two-inch fish at the local pet store, but Oscars grow rapidly. Before you know it, your Oscar puppy becomes quite a beast, topping out at almost 18 inches. That's like having a Chihuahua morph into a St. Bernard. 
If you want to have an Oscar as a pet, it's wise to begin with a big tank from the get-go, rather than trying to upgrade as they grow older. Oscars grow much too fast for that. Start with a 55-gallon tank or larger, emphasis on the larger, especially if you're going to keep them with other species. The best choices for tank mates are large, less aggressive fish, such as arowanas or baishers, or other cichlids that can hold their own, like green terrors, jack dempseys, firemouths, or convict cichlids. Because of their armored plating, large plecos, like sail fins, should do all right as well. However, the perfect tank mate for an Oscar is other Oscars of comparable size. If your aquarium is large enough to handle it, you can acquire several Oscars all at once and let them run with the pack. Apart from their aggressive nature, Oscars are easy fish to care for and feed. They make absolutely terrific pets, as long as you're prepared for how big they will get. Number 3. Common Plecos One of the most commonly found fish in pet stores is the common pleco. How common are they? My gosh, the word common is right there in their common name. Was somebody just lazy that day when it came time to name this fish? I don't know, it's a pleco. I see them everywhere. Just, just tag it as common pleco and let's go home. But I digress. The common pleco is native to the countries of Brazil, Guyana, and Suriname. This sucker mouth catfish is often referred to as the janitor fish because it is counted on to clean up an aquarium. It will eat almost any food you give it and will gobble up morsels missed by other fish. It's also skilled at consuming algae and can keep your glass and other surfaces spotless. Being so useful, I'm sure you can begin to see why the common pleco is so common. Yet there is one other major reason why the common pleco has become commonplace in this hobby. It is virtually indestructible. Warm water, cool water, low pH, high pH, soft water, hard water, the common pleco thrives in all of it. Common plecos seldom fall prey to other fish since they are protected by their armor-like scales and multiple sharp barbs. Even aggressive South American or African cichlids usually leave them be, and the common pleco itself is a relatively peaceful fish that minds its own business. Common plecos are also less prone to disease than most other species in the aquarium trade. This is why pet shops love to sell them. I have literally seen common plecos for sale in every single pet store I have ever been to. Common plecos cost the stores very little to stock, giving them a good profit margin. They are ridiculously easy to maintain and are super hardy and useful for their customers. Sounds like a real win-win situation, right? Well, it is if you know what you're getting into, because the dirty little secret about these great cleanup crew members is that common plecos get huge. In fact, it's quite common for the common pleco to grow to be 20 inches in length in the aquarium and even larger in the wild. Most people who purchase a common pleco have no idea how large they will eventually get, and unfortunately, the majority of stores do next to nothing to educate their customers about this. Before long, those ill-informed, unsuspecting fish keepers have a behemoth on their hands that has outgrown the 10-gallon tank the store also sold them. Seriously, not a week goes by where I don't see some poor individual giving away a common pleco on Craigslist because they no longer have room for that giant in their tank. Which is too bad, because in the proper sized tank, the common pleco is otherwise a superb species to keep, if you don't make this all too common mistake. Number 2. Clown Knife Fish One of the most intriguing and unusual freshwater fish in the hobby, the clown knife fish, or clown featherback as it is sometimes called, is a real attention getter. As with many fish that have the word clown in the common name, the clown knife fish is spotted. In this case, anywhere from 5 to 10 large black spots ringed with white. The other half of its common name comes from the perception of its silvery gray body being shaped like an ornate knife blade, or to some, resembling the shape of a feather. Either way, its appearance is quite striking. The clown knife fish is rather an oddity. Not only does it look odd with its tiny head relative to its big, curved, lengthy body, but it's also intriguing in its knack for being able to swim backwards as well as forwards, and its ability to breathe surface air. As you can guess, because it's on this list, the clown knife fish is a big critter. And to be fair, most fish hobbyists who buy this species know that they grow large, but many have no concept of exactly how gigantic the clown knife can actually get. No clowning around here, this creature can attain a length of 40 inches in captivity and well beyond that in the wild, where it inhabits rivers and streams in Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam. Although it easily classifies as a monster fish and a predator, the clown knife fish is surprisingly peaceful and generally speaking won't bother any fish that is too big to fit into its mouth. 
They can, however, be a bit scrappy with con specifics. Of course, you'll need a very large tank to house your clown knife fish. Nothing less than a 100 gallon aquarium will do. Larger is better. Because some people who purchase a clown knife fish for their home aquaria are not prepared for their eventual adult size, sadly many clown knives get dumped into local waterways to fend for themselves. This has led to it becoming quite an invasive species, since the clown knife fish is exceptionally hardy, adaptable, and long-lived, making it a nuisance fish in areas like Singapore, the Philippines, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and Florida in the United States. So if you decide to keep this fascinating fish, be sure you have the space to do so and a commitment to caring for them for the next 15 years. And number one, iridescent sharks. The iridescent shark, also known as the striped catfish, is the fish that irritates me the most and is the species that inspired this list. Not that I'm irritated with the actual fish, that would be silly. It's the folks in the aquarium and pet trade who keep pushing the species as an ideal addition to your home aquarium. That's who gets my blood boiling because they deceive so many pet owners and fish hobbyists, leading to disappointment and frustration for those fish keepers and possible unintentional abuse for the fish. Like the clown knife fish, iridescent sharks originate from Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Laos, living in the large rivers there. Although it is a type of catfish, the iridescent shark gets its name from its shark-like body shape and its iridescent skin. Undeniably, it is a very captivating species with a commanding appearance. No doubt about it, iridescent sharks are impressive fish to see swimming in your home aquarium, but they really shouldn't be there. Juveniles are caught and sold to the aquarium trade, but this is a species that is primarily fished for commercial food purposes and is often sold as frozen fillets under the name swai. And if it's a commercial fish, then you know the iridescent shark gets big. It gets bigger than big. Iridescent sharks get ginormous, reaching and often surpassing lengths of 52 inches. Four and a quarter feet long. That's the size of a dog. Have you got room for a dog in your aquarium? Don't get me wrong. Iridescent sharks are amazing fish to behold. I can't take my eyes off of them. But what are you going to do when they outgrow your 75 gallon tank? Your 100 gallon tank? Your 300 gallon tank? Got a lake in your backyard? <laughs> Most of us don't. Because they are active open water swimmers, a single adult sized specimen would need an aquarium that is at least 15 feet long, 6 feet high, and 6 feet wide. If you do the math, that calculates out to 4,039 gallons of water. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't have room for that size tank in my home. And what are you going to do when your iridescent shark outgrows the tank that you have? You can't count on your local public aquarium to take in your beloved pet. Believe me, those facilities are constantly turning down iridescent shark donations. As tempting as it may be, it simply isn't practical for most fish hobbyists to keep iridescent sharks and do right by them for their entire lifespan. This species is a true monster fish that can easily destroy aquarium heaters and other equipment or decor with its high-strung nervous temperament. Not only would you eventually need an industrial-sized aquarium to house it, you would also need an incredibly large sump to filter the water due to the massive amount of waste that even a mid-sized iridescent shark produces. Additionally, you'd need a heavy-duty, secured cover over the tank, since iridescent sharks are easily spooked and will thrash about and breach the surface of the water. There are very, very few species of fish commonly available in the aquarium trade that I find myself suggesting that people never get as pets but the iridescent shark is one. If there was ever a supposed aquarium fish that had a shot at growing colossal and stomping Tokyo, it's this fish. Just say no. Don't tell me I didn't warn you. So what are your experiences with these species? If you believe I'm wrong, please leave a comment below and straighten me out. This is just one man's opinion. Or if I'm right, tell me why you agree with me. And if there's a species you think should be on this list and isn't, then let everyone know by leaving a comment about it. One lucky person who leaves a comment will be chosen at random to receive an official Aquatacy sticker, absolutely free. The winner will be announced in the next Aquatacy countdown. And congratulations to D from Brooklyn for being the winner from the previous Aquatacy countdown. Be sure to check out their channel. If you liked this video, then please like this video, subscribe, and until next time, blessings to you.